Mac.com is dead, long live the king. It's confusing. There's so many options available to you when it comes to doing automations and AI agents. But today I'm going to look at what I'm doing. And I've been using Mac.com for a little while now. And those of you who have watched my videos before will have seen that. I love Mac.com. It allowed me to program things that I couldn't program, not being a programmer, and make some magic happen. For example, this little one in front of us, which actually allows me to get an RSS feed and create a blog title and collect a picture from Unsplash and then put it to a WordPress blog. And just being able to do that automatically without me having to do any work every day, it just goes and checks that RSS feed and does it, has been fantastic. And I really have loved using it. And I've built some very complex ones over the last couple of months to help my clients do all their social media without having to do any work themselves, using AI to write all the different posts and have all sorts of different streams going on and different prompts and different ways of entering information. There's lots of cool things you can do with make.com. But the fact of the matter is all good things must come to an end because unless a company moves forward and starts taking notice of what's going on around them, they're going to get left behind. And in this case, I really feel Mac.com has been left behind, which is sad because I want to stay with them. But I think the time's come to move and I've started looking at my other options. And the best option that I've found that I really love is N8N or Natan or whatever you want to call it. I love this piece of software. Now, why? It's pretty simple. I can create AI agents. And the difference is these agents will think I can put an input in, it can determine what I've said, choose the right tool for the job, and then do it. So instead of being a straight line, like we have with make.comp, we have a straight line. This happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and so on and so forth. With this one, I tell it to do something. It comes in here, it decides what it wants to do, and which tool it needs, and then it does it. And it can make lots of different decisions and I can loop back and there's so many things that I can do that I cannot do when I'm progressing a program through a straight line. And this AI agent is one of the reasons and probably the key reason why I'm moving. The second thing is that I can self-host this. I've been able to put this on an Amazon AWS server for $5 a month and hey presto I have my own server which is my private server and I can work on that without anyone else having access to it. And that also means that I'm not paying for all the runs I do. Because every time you run something, you pay for it. Yes, it's a very fair price that N8N has for their cloud service. And I highly recommend signing up for their cloud service and trying it, first of all. And I probably would have continued on, except that I was able to follow some YouTube videos. Thank you to the other YouTubers out there. And set up an AWS server to run N8N on. With make.com, it is proprietary and unlimited by what they do to move forward. This one being open sourced and also has a huge community adding to it is just giving me better options at this time. So what do I mean by an AI agent? Well, let's have a little look at what it can do. I can ask it questions. So you can see I've got two modules here, Google Calendar and Gmail. I can ask it what do I have on this week? And send that. And you'll see the AI agent thinking. And then it works out it needs to check my calendar, not my Gmail. And then it sends me the information back. Okay. So you'll notice that little thing. It comes in here. The AI agent thinks using OpenAI. In this case, I can attach any large language model to it. But... It then goes, yes, actually, I need the Google Calendar tool. And it'll go and get that and then come back and it spits out the answer to me. Now, you can imagine when you extrapolate this out, I can have Google Calendar, I can have Gmail, I can have my WordPress site and get it to go there and tell me what the latest post is. I can have all sorts of things hanging off here. In this case, I've got Gmail send a message, but I could have Gmail. So let's go here and go Gmail tool. And I might get it to do whatever I want it to do. So in this case, it's send it was the one we had. Get, we'll go and read. Mark is a read, so mark is unread. So it can find things and do a whole range of things. So let's go to mark is read. And then I'm just going to go back. But you'll notice that 
This one says send message and this one says Mark has read message. And this is the difference in that I can create these different jobs or different tools that can be done by the AI agent. And just by putting in one input, then the AI agent decides which tool it needs to use, does that, comes back, but even better, it can actually use multiple tools. So it can come in here and check my calendar and then email me my calendar for the week. So that's pretty cool. Now, obviously, that's just the fun stuff. This also will do everything that make.com does. So I can sit here and make this same feed, and I have done, in N8N. But as I said before, I was able to also self-host this, so that has been part of my decision to actually go this way. I think that hopefully make.com will come up with an AI agent that does this, that can think for us, and that will make a major difference to the flexibility it gives us. But the fact that we can actually win and we've got all sorts of different bots. So this one here, I got a telegram trigger. It comes in here, decides whether I'm speaking, typing or uploading a picture. If I'm speaking to it, it goes down here, converts the audio into text and then it, the AI agent decides what to do with it and answers it and then spits it out the other end or if it's a picture it analyzes the picture and sends me a response telling me what the picture is all about but you can see they're much more complex with what you can do and you can link multiple things together and split in this case it's is it true or false so you're getting more into the area of programming without needing to be a programmer so when I say make.com is dead, for now it's dead to me, but it's not dead to the world and I will still be using it. I do have quite a few clients whose social media tools are controlled by this system. Yes, I'll be coming over here and I will be looking at building them out on N8N and that'll take me a little while because obviously you've got two different learning curves, different programs, different ways of doing things, different tools, for example, up here in this tool, they've got this little JSON pass, which does all the passing and then spits it out. So it comes up and shows really nicely laid out in HTML. I'm trying to do the same thing with an agent in N8N. <laughs> I can't do it yet. So that's all right. I'll learn how to do it. But the key is that it took me a good day to work this part out. So if it takes me a good day to work this part out, this one, well, so be it. But in the end, that AI agent tool is the absolute killer. It can think for itself and it can make decisions and that makes my life so much easier and allows me to build such powerful tools. The other thing, of course, is I can actually add agents together. So I can have one agent does something, then sends it to the next agent who then decides that, okay, I've got that output. Now I'm going to do something else with it. So you can actually have multiple levels of thinking, not just the one. So the options are bottomless. I hope this video, you found something interesting and you probably understand my perspective now and why I think Make is dead. It's not going anywhere. It's a good company. It's been around quite a while. But I think tools like N8N are going to start to really deliver a devastating blow to some of the other programs that are available that allow us to build AI automations. I'll catch you in the next video.